Hello and welcome to a very special segment of Around the Wickets. As you know, Sri Lanka and Pakistan has just concluded a very interesting series, Tests, One Dares and T20. Now, I know that the Sri Lankan fan and the Sri Lankan team wanted Sri Lanka to win, but sadly, it didn't work out that way. So, we thought we will ask the best person involved, and that is the chairman of selectors, Kapila Vijay Gunawardhana, who is no stranger to cricket, has played for Sri Lanka, played a lot of school, school cricket and uh, certainly knows a thing or two about coaching so, and also about selecting. So, we thought we'll ask all our questions, your questions, my questions from Kapila and let's see what he says. Starting off Kapila, welcome to the program. Thank you very much Roshan. Thank you for having me. I, I know you must be disappointed that uh, Sri Lanka has lost uh, all three formats but what are your views and what do you see Sri Lanka going forward from here? No doubt I share the disappointment of the uh, uh, Sri Lankan spectator in not uh, winning any of the uh, formats but um, whilst uh, it was disappointing that we didn't really uh, win the series there were lots of positives that were visible <coughs> throughout the series so going forward I think we can be happy that uh, there's a lot of young talent coming through and um, which will augur well for Sri Lankan cricket going forward. There's no doubt uh, lots of uh, positives coming out, but then there are a few negatives and one negative or, or one big story has been Lasit Malinga. I mean, Lasit Malinga, as we know, one of the best bowlers in the shorter format, not just in the one-day format, especially in the T20 format. But he hasn't really lived up to the expectations of everybody and especially that second T20 game when normally Lasit Malinga would have won it for Sri Lanka. What are your thoughts about it? Yes, uh, Lasit uh, is considered the best T20 <coughs> bowler in the world and uh, it's true uh, he was disappointing throughout the ODI series and the T20s uh, against Pakistan but what he is facing right now is uh, in my view a technical flaw in his bowling I think he's lost his timing, uh, so he needs to work, out, work it out with the uh, coaches, which I'm sure he will do uh, within a short period of time. Well, that is very, very comforting new news, no doubt, because uh, Sri Lanka needs Lasit Malinga very much. Lasit Malinga, the bowler who could win them games, because we do know that Lasit Malinga has won many games for Sri Lanka. Now, one thing about the Sri Lankans is the Test Series. Now, most people felt that uh, third Test match where Sri Lanka had set Pakistan a target of well over 300 or 360, 370, could have or should have won that game. And one of the things that surprised most was the omission of Rangana Herat. Now, does it mean that uh, with a new spinner coming in, a young player coming in, that Rangana Herat is on the way out? Absolutely not. Uh, Rangana Herat remains the number one spinner where we are concerned. Uh, the reason Rangana was left out of the uh, third test was a tactical move and uh, the strategy there was we felt we would be better off using a spin, uh, I beg your pardon, a uh, uh, pace strategy against the Pakistanis in the third test. Unfortunately, Dushpant Shamir uh, had to pull out of that test. So that had an impact in the, the penetration of our bowling. But uh, where Rangan Herat is concerned, he is still uh, the number one spinner for Sri Lanka and he will remain so uh, for a while to come. Yeah, let's also focus a little bit on the one day series and particularly that fourth test Kapila, fourth one day Kapila, where we felt that the pitch was dry and uh, the ball was turning. We did see the Pakistan spinners really spinning the ball and when Sri Lanka got 255 or 56 with, uh, you know, a spin friendly track and a lot of uh, dryness on that pitch, most of us were expecting Sri Lanka to win. But in hindsight, uh, you know, we felt that the selection was wrong because there were two uh, frontline spinners that sat out and Sri Lanka opted for more the part-timer. Now, wh what was the thinking there? No, the thinking was definitely to uh, uh, go with the, uh, uh, the kind of attack that we had uh, adapted <coughs> throughout the series. Um, yes, one could say that uh, 
uh, additional spinner in the side would have made a difference. But then again, uh, ODI cricket needs to be won by the batsman. I still felt that uh, <coughs> the, the weakness really was in the batting, where we did not get enough runs on the board. Uh, and also, I felt the line we were bowling was not uh, quite uh, the, the way to go, because had we bowled wicket to wicket, I think um, it would have been a lot harder for the Pakistani batsmen to get those runs. Right. So that was the thinking, because I personally was really baffled to see Sri Lanka not playing either Sachitra Senanayaka or Sikuge Prasanna. Now, one of the challenges that a selection panel would have is to win big events. A World Cup, a World T20, that's always the target of any, any country. Now, the next big event in that sense is the World T20 coming up in 2016. You think you have seen enough or, or you have enough talent uh, in, the, uh, in the Sri Lankan setup uh, to try and, uh, you know, r retain the title? Well, as far as talent is concerned, we have no doubt that the talent is available. I think that was uh, clearly demonstrated with the young players that we uh, uh, <coughs> picked for the two T20s. Yes, big event, uh, big game uh, events are important. And uh, our strategy right now is to pick the right combination, first for the T20 World Cup in mm. March 2016, mm. and then get the team on track uh, for the 2019 World Cup in England. Mm. So the talent is there. What we tried to do during this series was to scan the landscape to s get an assessment of where the team stood in terms of uh, talent and uh, form right now. Because we must not forget the fact that uh, two of the <coughs> stalwarts of the team have uh, retired. And um, those are big shoes to mm -hmm. fill. Mm -hmm. And our line of thinking was to keep faith with the rest of the senior players and see where we stood in terms of the next T20 World Cup and the uh, World Cup in 2019. Mm -hmm. So I think this series revealed uh, some of the weaknesses that needed to be fixed. Mm -hmm. Um, so we have a clear plan going forward how to fix those. Uh, we will nurture and blood youngsters to come in to fill any voids that are there. And uh, in, when it comes to talent per se, I think uh, uh, we have a lot of in very exciting talent coming through and I'm sure they will deliver in time to come. One other question I think I need to ask you about the T20 is uh, the leaving out of Chandimal and Tirimana. Now, what does that amount to? Was it purely a resting uh, and, and for newer players to be looked at? Or are you telling the world or telling them that they are not seriously part of the T20, but they are only part of one day and test cricket? No, this question was posed to me by many uh, media and uh, I clearly explained uh, what our uh, line of thinking was, uh, <coughs> see, we needed to provide an opportunity for the youngsters that were in the wings mm. uh, without getting a proper opportunity mm. for a long time. And um, where the senior players are concerned, we know what their talent and capabilities are. Also, they've had one and a half months of continuous cricket. And we have a very busy calendar leading up to July 2016. Mm. And we need to manage the workloads of some of these senior players. Mm. So the thinking was <coughs> to provide an opportunity for the youngsters uh, to see how they would perform in the big stage and um, work out the best combination uh, for the 2016 T20 World Cup. Mm -hmm. So everybody is in contention to be in that squad. And uh, depending on the conditions, the wickets 
we anticipate um, the the opposition we will pick the best side mm -hmm. to defend the title right now one thing that we did see particularly in the t20 is uh, some of the players selected were basically from outside colombo now kapila how do you propose to unearth such talent because you take milinda sirivardhana for example he comes from kalutara you take dasun shanaka he comes from nigambo i mean i can keep listing out some of these names dananjay silva he comes from debravava so do you have a particular plan or your vice chairman of the interim committee your chairman of selectors so do you have a particular plan, plan in place or you you're just going to follow the current system no uh, i think unearthing uh, talent from across the island is very important uh, we are looking at various programs at uh, district and provincial levels to mm. identify these talented uh, young players and bring them into the uh, the national uh, grid so to speak mm. uh, it is uh, very encouraging that uh, these boys have now been uh, given an opportunity mm. and uh, the whole country has seen what their talent and capabilities are mm. uh, i'm sure that alone will encourage many other boys out there who are talented mm. to keep uh, pressing for a national uh, slot um so when it comes to unearthing talent i think we need to have a very uh, sound program in place which we are working on at the moment yeah let's not also forget that sri lanka cricket has a good system in place they got their district coaches they got their provincial coaches and they got a good system in place but as kapila says they will be looking at them very closely but also on the subject of school boy cricketers now there are very talented school boy cricketers who come out of the under 19 system and then for some reason they get lost you know most of them don't make it for for various reasons now how how would you handle a situation like that and what hope do they have see uh our schools cricket uh, network i think remains still the best in the world and there's a lot of talent that comes out on an annual <coughs> basis now being a under 19 tournament mm. um there is a, a bit of a, a age gap mm. which needs to be bridged in my view because uh, during our era uh, school cricket was uh, under 20 mm. affair so the uh, boys coming out were more mature in terms of being able to fit into a club circuit mm. straight away mm. right now that is not the case and that is why we are not seeing that uh, the arjuna nandungas arvind de silva roshan mahanam uh, you know coming and getting mm. immediately uh, making an impact in the club circuit mm. uh the cricket uh, slc is looking in terms of how to bridge that gap and there's also been a proposal to make the schools cricket uh, uh, under 20, 20 tournament once again mm. so hopefully the ministry of education will consider that favorably which will help in the process yeah one other area kapila that is of concern is in the domestic tournament is the dearth of the experienced cricketer now we've read recently chanaka velagedra has migrated to australia before that sohan burlas who hadn't made the national grade but a very fine domestic cricketer has moved over to australia then malinga bandara who played for sri lanka is going over then kaushal aviratna van dot i mean i can name a list in the kajai singer now i can see two things happening here one thing is that of course velagedra tends to think that he has no place in the domestic scene but the main problem i feel is the the experience factor that these players had and imparting it to their juniors that is one and the second thing is we may have a system where you know the competition is between a very even field rather than having those experienced players playing now how do you see this problem being overcome actually uh, it needs to be looked at in a very broad sense because uh, in terms of opportunities for cricketers one need to understand how rare a place in the sri lanka team is mm -hmm. now sri lanka obtained test status in 1981 mm -hmm. and 34 years down the road we have produced 129 
test cricketers and about 160 ODI cricketers. Mm. So as a percentage, that is three and a half cricketers a year. Mm. That's how rare it is to be able to make it to the national team. So, so do you say it's a good thing or a bad thing? No, it's reality. Mm. Okay. I'm not going to say whether it's good or bad, so but so that is reality. What would so you the want? opportunities are yeah. limited. Okay. You know, uh, so what we need to do mm. is to create a situation where there is a lot of A team mm. and emerging mm. um, tournaments. Mm. Um, that is one way we um, want to address the dearth of cricket mm. for the players who do not get into the national mm. uh, team mm. uh, to be playing quality cricket mm. and to be ready to play uh, for the national team when their services are needed. Mm. So yes, there are gaps in the system mm. which needs to be addressed mm. and um, I'm sure going forward mm. uh, we want to have four two inbound and two mm. outbound mm. and uh, four emerging tours mm. on an annual basis mm. so that 45 to 50 cricketers mm. will have opportunity to play good quality international cricket and be ready for national service whenever their services are required. Now, just a question there. When you talk of these cricketers being ready, now, now if we, we were addressing Velagedra, for example, he's played test cricket and you know he had had an injury situation now you're basically talking of the players who are coming through now what would be the case of the senior player yeah. i mean the the velagedra type player do they also have a look in in in, in your setup see i have uh, we have our selection panel has always maintained that uh, there is value in experience hmm. okay and uh, if you take players like jehan mubarak hmm. He's coming into the test side after seven years. And um, similarly, uh, players like uh, Vela Gedara mm. um, would have always been looked at to meet short-term requirements of the team. Mm. I mean, they are never considered to be out of contention mm. purely on age. Mm. You know. So. Um, the team will always have short term, medium term mm. and long term mm. needs. Mm. So all these players mm. fit in Somewhere. to one of these categories. Mm. And uh, we have had a very open dialogue with some of these senior players. Mm. We have told them exactly mm. where we would be looking mm. for them to fit in. Mm. And um, uh, the experienced players need not feel that they are left out of selection mm. if and when a uh, uh, situation warrants their inclusion they will be looked at very carefully actually on that on that point you should be congratulated for bringing in somebody like jahan mubarak because he got two back to back thousands in local cricket and on 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 the same subject milin the sirivardhan i mean he got a thousand runs and 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 this is a, a reward for some good work uh, at the domestic scene but then kapila Milinda took time to be to be noticed. Now, what you just suggested seemed to answer this question that I was going to ask you. Now, people like players like Milinda was always good. It was a case of he not being noticed. So, you bringing in the A team and the emerging hopefully will sort that problem. But one area that as selectors you're going to have an issue is identifying and watching cricketers. Now, are you kind of able to go and watch games because this is uh, I know my question is a little bit long but this has been a problem and a complaint uh, that is what we did the moment we were vested with this responsibility so you're going to watch Russia. domestic cricket we are going to watch domestic cricket and actually our primary focus from the time we took over this uh, responsibility we focused on the A team and the emerging team hmm. And um, it was by watching these players that mm. we were able to identify their talent mm. and then bring them on stream. Mm. Now, Milinda Sirivadana, for example, mm. I think he's been one of the leading players in the domestic circuit mm. for many years. Mm. Um, 
to be very honest, I'm surprised that he was not given an opportunity before. Uh, but uh, given the opportunity, uh, the player has grabbed it with both hands, which is a very uh, comforting uh, uh, thing for us to see. Mm -hmm. Because um, uh, it would have been uh, unfortunate mm -hmm. if players like that, who mm -hmm. had performed in domestic cricket, mm -hmm are not recognized mm. because uh, domestic cricket is a bedrock of our cricket. Mm. Unless we provide opportunities for the players who perform in that mm. tournament, mm. Um, we would not be in, uh, give doing the right thing by the domestic uh, cricketers who are coming through the ranks. I'm actually glad that uh, Kapila said that, that uh, he, he is paying so much of emphasis uh, on domestic cricket. Because there were times, uh, not, not recently, but some time ago, there were chairman of selectors who actually said that uh, they never considered domestic cricket. They didn't think that domestic cricket was good enough. And therefore, they'll, they'll try and go on what they know of a player. Now, you appear, obviously don't no, say to subscribe a, to a, that. No, we have a, a completely different way of looking at it, uh, Roshan. Because yeah. Yes, there are weaknesses in the domestic uh, tournament structure, mm. which I uh, think SLC needs to address mm. in collaboration with the uh, local clubs. Mm. Uh, that needs to be done. Mm. We need to play on better wickets mm. if we are to prepare our uh, cricketers for international mm. cricket, mm. because uh, playing on underprepared wickets is not going to add any value to our cricket going forward. Mm. So that is something that we need to mm. look at very critically. Yeah. Um, and domestic cricket is where we uh, nurture our young uh, talent. Mm. So that needs to be uh, where you look in terms of uh, drafting in players to the national grid. Mm. Well, I must confess one thing uh, before my next question. Um, as a television host, I tend to think that every time I host a program or host a live broadcast, that I lose a few years and I add on a few more grey hairs and, and grow older. Now, I know Kapila doesn't look old at all and I don't want to talk about the grey hairs on his head. But question, how is it to be a national selector? Do you have the same problem? Is it too much of a worry? No, I mean, uh, see, uh, being a national selector, no matter what decision you make, somebody is going to be criticizing you. So if you don't have a stomach to take criticism, I should not be accepting this responsibility. Uh, what we try to do, the four selectors, is uh, to trust our eyes, believe in what we see, mm. and uh, make our uh, selections in, in a, uh, true to our conscience. And uh, if you keep it simple, it's not a uh, hard right, task. Not a hard one at all. Okay. Yeah. Now, cricketers are told when you play, go and enjoy yourself. I'm sure you would have been told the same thing. Now, as a selector, finally, final question. Do you enjoy yourself as a selector? Absolutely. I mean, uh, uh, it's, uh, it gives, you, gives us a lot of pleasure seeing the youngsters uh, that you identify uh, performing the way they have. And uh, there are lots more more in the pipeline uh, to come into national uh, service and uh, yes i must say you know it's not a, uh, a grueling function so you don't lose sleepless uh, or you don't lose nights no, I don't. of uh, not sleeping no honestly i don't good kapila thank you very much for your company thank you so much for that insight you provided uh, we'd be honored to have you as a chairman of selectors uh, having such a busy schedule and I'm sure the viewer would have enjoyed your explanation and particularly what you said about certain areas of concern and where people always had questions. Hope you enjoyed this very special segment with the chairman of selectors on Around the Wickets with Papare.com. We'll see you again very, very soon.